Hi, my name is Chetan Walia. Welcome to 15 virtual mistakes that people are making today on their virtual calls. The world has shifted to video calling on Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever, and people are making certain obvious silly mistakes that can easily be fixed. Making these mistakes today is hurting your personal brand more than anything else. It's making you come across as look unprofessional and it's time to fix it. Yes, of course, early in the lockdown about six months back, people didn't know how to be online, but today it's an expectation that you come across a certain bit of professional and the idea behind it really being that it's you and your brand that gets hurt, not just what the objective of your call might be. So let's dive into straight into these mistakes and have a look at what these are. The first one, it's a no-brainer really, but it's amazing as to the number of people who are making these mistakes. The video is off. It's a video call for a reason. Otherwise, the person would have just called you on the phone. But it's a video call and what people don't realize, sometimes they come on the video call, the video is off. The expectation on the other side is to be able to see you. That's the objective behind the call. And the video being off communicates to the other side that you might have something to hide. What is wrong with you? There must be something wrong. The video being off is plain unprofessional. Consider this. Let's say that you're in a personal meeting. The people can see you, right? And that's the reason behind the video call. They should be able to see you. There's really no excuse. If you aren't ready with your lighting or with your room being in a mess or whatever it is, got to fix it because it's an opportunity to come live so that people are able to see you. It's an opportunity to make an impression, to crack the deal, whatever it is. But on a video call, no brainer, video can't be off. The second mistake people make is forgetting to use the mute button. It's there for a reason. Picture a meeting where four or five people are sitting. If two other people are speaking, what do you do? Your job there is to listen and same for video calls as well. Your job is to listen and sometimes there are noises in your background and there are things going around in your home or office which are interrupting the meeting. The normal social etiquette says please put your mute off so that you don't come across as an irritant in a meeting but come as a facilitator of whatever is happening. This is something I've seen so many people do in these last six months. They get almost addicted to watching themselves in the camera that they start looking at themselves while they're talking in complete awe of themselves. And it's almost like watching a movie for people that they start hogging airtime because they're so excited to see themselves. Hogging airtime is not the objective behind a video call. Your agenda in the meeting is you don't need to hog it more than needed. And there is one very deep-rooted reason for it. Virtual attention spans are far lesser than in-person attention spans, right? You need to be able to make your point quicker. You need to be able to make it crisper for you to have a recall. Otherwise, your recall would be you spoke more than what is needed and it's an irritant to invite you again in a video call. You look shabby. It was all right six months ago. People were in this cool thing that this is my lockdown look and I'm unshaven and I'm shabbily dressed and looking, lying around on my couch. Whether it was forgiven or not six months back, today, the reality is that the in-person meeting stands replaced by the Zoom meeting and there's really no excuse for you to be shabby. Whether you were prepared or not six months ago does not matter. Today you better be prepared because this is the way that the world is going to be in the future and it's going to hurt your brand. It's not about your company. It's not about what you're doing. It's about you, the person. Today your persona is what it is on a video call and you cannot afford to be looking shabby and all undressed for a meeting because if you are, then that's the impression that you carry forward. People are no longer judging you that this is a video call, so it's forgiven. It's become the norm. And if it's become the norm, you've got to decide what your norm is going to become. Another mistake people make is they forget to look into the camera. We are so used to talking to people and looking at them that by default, when there's a Zoom meeting happening, we look everywhere else but the camera and the eye contact happens in the camera. Communication is about eye contact. Making an impression is about eye contact and you need to keep an eye contact in the camera. Of course, you can every now and then look onto the screen if you have a slide playing or every now and then look into the screen to see the body language of people. But while you're speaking, the best impact and the most significant impact that you can make is by looking into the camera because that's when people get a feeling that you're looking right to them into the eye and that's the best form of confident communication that can take place. Coming in late for a meeting is unforgivable. Imagine a situation, you're waiting 20 people together and you're waiting for this 21st person who ends up 30 minutes late walking into your house to a meeting. It's irritating. It's annoying, isn't it? Don't be late for a Zoom meeting. It's highly unprofessional. 
It hurts you as a brand. It hurts the agenda of the meeting. It makes you look unprofessional. There's really no excuse for it. And there is a countless number of people I see these days where we are on a Zoom meeting, everyone's waiting, and suddenly there'll be a knock on the door as if someone's about to enter and there you're going to start all over again to fill in that person up. It's most annoying, it's most irritating, and you don't want to be the reason to cause irritation to 20 other people because it hurts you as a person. Taking a video call and not being in a professional surrounding. There's no excuse again left for it. Get a tidy space in your house, get a desk. I've seen people sitting on couches and lying down on the beds with the dogs licking their faces and taking video calls. Really not on because you don't feel like speaking to them again. The world, there was a study done by Cisco that 80% of all business interactions will happen online by 2021. If that's the reality, regardless of the COVID situation that the world is moving to, you better get a tidy desk up in your home, up and running so that you come across as ready for the world in the 21st century. Otherwise, you come across as someone who's just not ready. And six months later, if you're not ready, people really don't want to do business with you. A significant amount of time we've seen Zoom calls where people are sitting in dimly lit situations, their faces are hardly visible, their backgrounds are hardly visible, what's going around is hardly visible, there are flickers of light coming through looking at some mysterious person. Please don't do that, you're ruining your reputation. Get a tidy corner, get it well lit so that you're visible, the idea behind the meeting the idea behind an in-person meeting, which is essentially a video meeting today, is that you've got to be visible. I need to see you. I need to be able to interact with you. I want to see your emotion. I want to see your body language. And it's your responsibility to make yourself visible. People have this habit of treating virtual meetings as if they're just virtual and they're not real. Virtual is a platform. The meeting is very much real. It's no less important than in-person ones. The in-person ones stand replaced by virtual meetings. Don't treat them as something that is not important because if you treat them as not important, that's the way the future is. And if that's the way the future is, you're treating the future to be unimportant. You're really making a dent in your own career, in your own personality, in your own prospects for the future. Zoom meetings, virtual meetings, any meeting, if my name is involved and if my name is going to be in there in the meeting, it's my brand that's going to get made or hurt and it's my responsibility to treat it professionally and as professionally as any other thing. And then comes a stage where people forget to give a thought to what their background is, what's coming across in the background. I've seen kitchens and I've seen drawing rooms and I've even seen toilets and I've seen dogs pee. That's not the way you want to come across, do you? All it takes today is a two feet by two feet tidy space. And again, there is no excuse for not having it. All it needs a tidy wall, a little shelf around the corner, whatever it is that makes you feel good about where you are sitting. And you cannot give me any excuse. I don't think a person can convince me today that no matter what their situation is, they can't find a tidy two by two corner so that they can come across and make an impression that is professional, so that they can come across and make, a pro and make an impression that stands apart. Look at it like this. If you stand apart in a setting of 20 people and you come across as looking your brightest, best, and the most prepared, that's your competitive advantage right there to stand out in a crowded market. No one's ready. Not a lot of people are ready to conduct all these things professionally. And that's the opportunity, isn't it? That you be the one to take the lead, set a benchmark, and people then want to interact with you and see more of you and talk more to you. And that's what you really want in a setting, isn't it? So don't treat it something that's just virtual and not real. It's very much real. That we are into the future. This is the way things are going to be. And you got to take responsibility and do this professionally. I've seen people struggle with unstable Wi-Fi, slow connections. Where while they're talking, the video is breaking or their voice is breaking. Of course, not entirely your fault. It's your service provider. But again, it's your responsibility to have it fixed. Do whatever it takes to get it fixed. Because this is your equivalent of transportation today. This is your equivalent of being on time today is a stable Wi-Fi connection. People get engrossed or people get succumbed into noisy settings. Now, very understandable. Some of us take calls from home. Some of us take calls from offices. There's noise around, but you've got to minimize it to whatever extent possible. Of course, it's not entirely doable that you get, that you get soundproof rooms and stuff, but to whatever extent possible, you've got to get a quiet corner. You've got to shut the door, take the call professionally, 
it reflects in you when there's noise you get distracted and so does everyone else so it's up to you to conduct it in as professional and minimal background noise as possible for you to do people a lot of times in the zoom meetings and again something that's understandable and not paid attention to only account for top half of their outfit to show while in 99.9% .9 of the cases that is going to be true no one's going to tilt your camera to see what you're wearing underneath but there are times you're going to get up to pick up a pen you're going to get up to sip a coffee or you're just going to get up and go grab a paper or a file or a book or something that you need to refer to and at that time all of you are visible so better solution than to be shutting your camera and doing that because people forget that you don't want to get caught into these meetings by not wearing a trouser or sitting in shock because it come across as highly unprofessional people in zoom meetings and we discussed it similar to an earlier point below people do a lot more talking than asking questions the idea behind any meeting forget a zoom meeting even an in person meeting is to ask questions because when we ask questions we initiate a conversation and a conversation is a way to initiate a dialogue and there's no different in a virtual meeting you're going to be asking a lot more than talking give other people the air time take a back, back seat because then you make others feel important and when you make others feel important your brand automatically goes up and the last point in this series is people come into a zoom meeting and they switch off themselves by some fear or inhibition and they do no talking or asking at all while you don't want to be hogging a lot of air time and you don't want to be asking very unnecessary questions but you have to get your presence felt right if you're in a meeting you're not there just to attend you're there to participate don't lose sight of it because if you are there and people are blinded to you which means they'll be blinded to you when you're not doing talking a lot of people have the screen mode on and they'll only see you if you're talking and if you're not talking or asking any question and virtually making no contribution at all then you might as well have not been there and that's what will register in people's mind I hope these pointers help you. They're very easy fixes, as you can see, and they can make at least a 40 to 50% jump in the way that you come across to other people. So use them. Tell us in the comments as to how you felt about these or any other points that you might want to add on to the list. Feel free to do so. See you next time. Cheers.